Sanjaka is suggested that uh, yes, we should have had uh, last week itself we should have decided that uh, anatomy uh, applied anatomy for vitreous retina should have been presented. Yeah, yeah, I agree, sir. I agree. The basics of that uh, class can be covered. Uh, and then also, earlier. as a fellow, she, I wanted to make a schedule, so it has, it has to be a class so that uh, we don't discuss uh, uh, the, the controversy here. The controversy we can discuss in retina awesome because that's for a surgical technique between experienced surgeons where you can find and visit you as a, maybe you have questions you can write there and i will then, i will start uh, uh, i will start the meeting uh, talking about uh, basics in vitro retinal surgery and then i will stop so we can discuss the good thing is that we discuss and uh, we share yeah. You know, our experience with the residents and fellows. I think it's a good idea. So, uh, so what I, Hassan and uh, Jai, what I'm suggesting that uh, we have like a regular class, like an undergraduate, but the topics uh, should be selected from Ryan's book or uh, uh, Steve Charles' book. I feel like, sure, yeah, make a timetable and you, me, and uh, Jaydeep and Dr. Uh, um, uh, mainly, and uh, Dr. Uh, Amit Jain and Asta to say, okay, so every week we'll have a fellow to talk from their angle, the basics of anatomy or whatever physiology related, and we talk the subject to the theory, 30 minutes, and 15 minutes we discuss only that. We don't talk experience, we talk the, so I suggested to her in few weeks, we'll finish the uh, entire veterinary surgery theory. Ah, very good. Yeah, theory. And, and then, you have then the, uh, the medical retina again. Ah, medical you retina have the program ready. Same. And uh, if you have the program ready, just send it off to me. And yeah. then I will mix it with my program. And so we spread from Correct. the next week on, we start uh, the program. That would be great. So it is not ready, but uh, me, Aishwarya, and Jaydeep will prepare it. And we five will decide. Then we will announce in the next two, three days. And then we can go on regularly. Yeah, that's a very and good and idea. Two, I like that. And two, three weeks later, I want uh, your fellow whoever is interested can decide what they will talk for 15 minutes. And then we can have the combination. One fellow from your institute, one fellow from ours. And then we can also select one fellow from any other place in India or in Brazil. But we, we yeah, decide, yeah. you, me, and Jaydeep okay. will decide yeah. in the a month ahead who will present when. Yeah, it's going to be a great schedule. So yes. you send me yours, uh, and uh, I will send you mine, and we mix them, and uh, we are going to do a very good program. That's going to so be I'm great. Now, uh, I'm now muting, so we, we, we so allow you this, to start. Well, just one question before we start, sir. Yeah. This will be like like today, every Tuesday, we are having this uh, class. So yes. in that, uh, at the beginning, uh, we will have this, and that's what you're saying, right? No, no. I'm suggesting a format. 3.30 to 4.30, we'll keep only one hour. And 3.30 hmm. to 3.45 will be uh, like uh, starting and by the fellow, whichever, right? Two to three, I suggested Aishwarya so that we know the system. And then sure, sure, sure. we are opening the system to anybody through YouTube and uh, uh, wherever. And then 30 minutes talk by the uh, consultant as a class. And 15 minutes discussion about the same talk, only that topic. And conclude by saying next week, so and so will, uh, uh, fellow will present, so and so consultant will present. That's great, okay. yeah. Okay. So we're gonna start the next week with the program. And yeah. Today I will talk. Do you have any, any other question? Maybe? No, no. This is this yeah. is our this class which we are having now Tuesday afternoon. That's what I wanted to know. This is what we are talking, right? Not separate. Only one. Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Tuesday only. Uh, it has to be a theory in the beginning. From uh, cover the all subjects of theory, right? From uh, anatomy. The, uh, for example, we now talking basic That's steps of uh, scleral buckling. We have to do real step by right from conjunctiva to conjunctiva, and then uh, vitrectomy. Then we start with the uh, um, like uh, uh, scleral buckling sir, complications. Yeah, and, sure. So we and, follow and, the program. Vitrectomy complication. Then specifically to macular hole and uh, um, macular degenerative vitrectomy. Yeah, very vitrectomy. good ideas. And uh, we have our uh, yeah. vitrectomy like uh, all theory. Indication, right, contraindication, sure. complication, and if it is a long topic, we can extend it to two topics, two two sessions. Yeah, yeah. certainly. And certainly. there's no deadline, we discuss, so we can take we six months on, to finish uh, the theory. Topic. In the meantime, Aishwarya, I'm keeping Aishwarya as a new fellow, like that. Anywhere new fellow is there, can orient himself with the subject. At least sure. a sound subject in the mind, 
where many people may not have uh, even chance of assisting now. Correct, sir. And then sir, also, sir, sir. I have written to VRSI, I have written to AOS, saying that this can be an uh, eye opener for a PG that to decide on uh, his future uh, career. If he wants to do it, little fellow, how it's going to be, how much theory has to read, how much he has to be. So I am suggesting a, a sound knowledge before entering the surgical uh, vitrectomy. Yeah, this is good because in okay, this sir, way, sure, sure, it's going to be sure, possible sure. to spread to a broader audience and uh, yes. more residents. And as you said, postgraduate people as well, they learn also the basics and things. And uh, we get to the moment uh, we're going to be talking about uh, specific surgeries. Yes. yes. And uh, what, what I prepared today, and uh, I want to thank also... Uh, Jessica Fassbender from our Retinal Fellowship. She's there. She's a Retinal Fellow. And, uh, we, are, we are happy she's there too. And I uh, would like you, I, I made uh, some of you co-hosts. So yes, whoever yes. gets yes, seen, you just yes. allow them in to. And yes, I also yes. invited Dr. Yes. Sahad, Sahad Wahib from Saudi Arabia. He's going to participate with us. He's from Retinal. So he's going to be yes. with us uh, in a few minutes time. He's seeing some yes. patients right now, but... Uh, is almost done. Yes. And uh, the subject today for us to, to start with, uh, you'll be vitro retinal surgery, the basics of surgery. How many of you already doing vitrectomies 100% uh, alone? Uh, J. Deep, you do 100% uh, vitrectomy alone, don't you? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I've, I've been doing since 2012. And uh, it's good that we... Uh, Asta, are you there? Yes, hi, Dr. Hudson. Hi, how are good you doing? Morning. Everything? Yeah, everything fine? I'm good, sir. How are you? Yes, That's sir, fine. yes, sir. And uh, so I will tell you from my experience. I like, I, as I said... Uh, before, I like always telling a, a story, you know, because the story you tell comes from the history, from the past, and the history that it's going to be in the future here. So uh, it's good to tell. Hello, Amit. Welcome. And uh, so I will tell you about uh, this in uh, uh, how we started. I will start with uh, my uh, retinal fellowship in uh, 1996 here in Brazil. This uh, retinal fellowship, I did the uh, retinal fellowship uh, with uh, Marcos Avila, my mentor from here. And uh, we did lots of vitrectomies. We had this... Uh, I think somebody has a uh, YouTube one, somebody. Yes, sir. I guess. Yeah, it's okay now. I think uh, somebody has the YouTube on. Uh, J -Dip, J -Dip, I think J Deep is uh, with. Uh, no, sir, I, I am not having YouTube on, sir. Everybody is muted, I think, now. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so uh, I was telling, I did uh, a retinal fellowship here in this city, this city of Goiânia, Brazil, and uh, we are 200 kilometers from... Yeah. 
Now I understood. I have, <laughs> I have to ask you excuses. I have two YouTubes open here. <laughs> One from the first link and then the other from the second link. That was it was reverberating my, my voices here. I had the two open. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, so I, I was telling you that uh, we had this fellowship here in Goiânia, Brazil. Goiânia is a city uh, 200 kilometers from the capital, our capital, Brasilia. And uh, uh, you are in the Mumbai, no? Yes, sir. And, and how far is Mumbai from uh, New Delhi? Is it too far? It's about 2,000 kilometers. Oh, long. I, I thought they were closer. So these are probably, I don't know, maybe the uh, largest cities in India, I guess, no? Yes, sir. And so, so uh, I did the fellowship. By the time I did this uh, Retina Fellowship over here, uh, interesting, uh, we did the vitrectomy with uh, Lander Systems. If you don't remember or if you haven't uh, had contact with the Lander System, maybe Natarajan had the contact with the Lander System. There were small lenses, small contact lenses that we used uh, to put on the cornea, and uh, with these lenses, we uh, could see the uh, retina to operate. But uh, we usually saw it very focal. For example, we had this uh, vitrectomy lens that we put the lens on the cornea, and we see the whole thing down, but we didn't have a broad uh, view from the retina to operate. Do, do you get this? And then we had... So we still uh, use the landers. I mean, I use... Ah, you still use the landers? So, I, so yeah, better. I use it for doing uh, macular peeling and all that, sir. Yeah, it's For the good. magnified macular peeling, I, macular hole, I still use the landers, sir. Yeah, I yeah, still it, use the landers good. for it's macular good. holes. Yeah, for macular holes. I, I like uh, to use often, sometimes, if it's for that purpose to look at the macula, to, uh, to do a peel, a retina peel for macula hole, for apparatal membrane, that works good. Still some people use. But the history behind this, I'm telling you, is that they use that for everything. And so they have this uh, lens, the contact lens, to look at the uh, serial pole. But uh, this lens was not wide angle. So even it was not macular lens, but you just saw uh, the posterior pole. You didn't see anything else. And then you had to use the prism lens. It's a lens like that with a, a prism. So you rotated the lens around the eye on a ring that was uh, sutured on the cornea. And so you had to rotate the prism 360 degrees in order to see the retinal periphery. And so you started with the core vitrectomy and then you rotated the lens 360 degrees so you could uh, get rid of the vitreous, the peripheral vitreous. So it was very difficult because you uh, took a lot more time with the vitrectomy as opposed to today's time. Today, uh, the vitrectomies are very fast. Another thing, by that time, I'm talking about uh, 30 years ago, 30, 35, 25, uh, we had this uh, system that was not uh, uh, the system uh, uh, MIVS, uh, microinvasive uh, vitreo retinal surgery. So we had the large 19 or 20 gauge uh, openings for sclerotomies. So the uh, materials are, were larger, a lot larger. So you had a lot more turbulence. The cutters were not the best. The cutters were good, but uh, mostly uh, they could go up to 100 cuts per minute and not more. 800, 100, that was still good, you know? And uh, so uh, with time, these uh, materials were developed and got a lot, a lot better. And today we have uh, equipment that go from 1,000 to 5,000 cuts per minute. So we, we had a lot more uh, and better cases and better possibilities and better post-operative period patients 
the uh, the time for the patient uh, to to get a better vision now is a, a lot uh, less. So today everything is uh, is better. So I will share with you what we do usually for a basic vitrectomy. I'm talking about basic vitrectomy. I'm not putting here and discussing the case into detail, but the thing for you to do a very good vitrectomy, uh, first of all, you got to depend on a very good view and on a very good lens and a very good system. So today I talked about the uh, Lander system, but now we have the uh, wide-angle systems. Most people use today the wide-angle vitrectomy viewing systems. We have some works on that. And uh, by the time I went to Toronto, Canada to do my retinal fellowship over there, some people were still doing the Landers and then they switched to the uh, wide-angle vitrectomy viewing systems and I helped them uh, influencing them to change because it, it was uh, better and uh, you know everybody today, everybody, uh, almost everybody uses uh, the uh, wide angle system so you have a very broad view from everything. You are able to perform good surgeries, uh, seeing the whole thing and uh, if you want to narrow down to see the, uh, the, the uh, macular hole for example, you might use a wide angle macular lens or you might use the uh, uh, regular uh, macular lens for only approaching the macular area. So you do, uh, in this case, some people prefer, but uh, we had a lot more possibilities today. And uh, I will share my screen with you. So I will show this surgery to you. Can you see my screen there? So I will enlarge a bit here. This surgery is uh, translated into Portuguese and English as well. Uh, we, a friend of mine from uh, our city asked me to do this uh, so that uh, we could uh, use this in, the, in a book, in a retina book over here with the link so people could watch the surgery as well. I think uh, it's large enough. I don't want to enlarge it uh, totally. But uh, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. So I will, I will share the surgery and uh, then I will stop some time. It's, it's a short video, only five minutes, and uh, we'll discuss. So this is our city here. So we are, we are talking about uh, the posterior vitrectomy, and this case illustrates very well what I, wanted, I want to say, because we have these structures uh, inside the eye, inside uh, in the vitreous, in the retina, in the epiretina, things that we have to understand before doing the uh, vitrectomy. So the patient is a fake one. So we start with uh, these chlorotomies. Usually, uh, the patient in this case is phakic, so I have uh, measuring their three or 3.5. In this case, I, I went towards uh, 3.5, uh, almost 3.8 in order not to touch the lens. So if you are, uh, uh, have the patient uh, phakic or aphakic or pseudophakic, you gotta be. You you may be closer to the uh, the uh, limbus, so you don't have a problem of touching the lens because you don't have. Uh, I mean the uh, the natural lens, but uh, you may touch the uh, intraocular lens even if you need to clean the posterior capsule. But in this case, because the patient is phakic, I went a little uh, further, and uh, we do this temporal inferior uh, sclerotomy. Uh, in that place, we use the uh, infusion line, and we have two more, the uh, supratemporal and supranasal sclerotomies. 
for the materials we are using the light pipe and we're using the uh, cutter as well So you have here the three uh, sclerotomies, and uh, the infrotemporal is usually for the infusion line, but uh, not always. You might use the, uh, you, you might uh, change this. You know, with the experience and the time, you're gonna see that in some cases, if you have a choroidos over there, infrotemporal, you have a big choroidos. How can you put the infusion line there? So I will switch it to uh, infronasal. But uh, if it's okay, you, you still keep it there. By the time I did my retinal fellowship here in Goiânia, we put, as you see here, you have the uh, uh, illumination pipe, you have the uh, cutter, but then I, will, I would put the uh, infusion line over here, super, uh, superior, not inferior. So you might change. Or you, you, if you want, if you are comfortable, you put a little more uh, open over here, the sclerotomy and the other side a little more open, and you put the uh, infusion in between the two. So you might choose, but usually what uh, most people do is uh, using the infrotemporal infusion line like that. So it uh, doesn't stay on the way as well. So making it easier to perform the vitrectomy. I'm not talking about the all their illumination uh, devices uh, that we could use. And uh, this is the regular cutter here, the regular illumination pipe, and the infusion line. So that varies. The position might vary. Another thing, since I'm here already, this is, uh, for example, the uh, right eye. If I when I do a macular hole surgery, these, usually I use the uh, right hand, if I'm right-handed, and then this is perfect for me because it's already temporal. But if the uh, macular hole was uh, in the left eye, then I would have to put this infusion line, here, this uh, sclerotomy here, a little uh, more close to, instead of 10 o'clock, I'll put it 11 o'clock so that I would reach, I I would, uh, reach the uh, macular area in the left eye, the other side, without touching the lens. Understand what I mean? So that varies. Uh, you usually, where you put your infusion line and the sclerotomies? Same places, sir. Same Inferno place? Temporal. Yes, inferotemporal. That's the normal one, what you have shown, that's what we follow. And okay, as you said, okay. there are certain unusual cases where you might have to change the locations. Uh, something even like if there is a amateur glaucoma valve in superotemporal quadrant with a bleb there, or uh, something like that, some some uh, injury where there is a retinal, uh, already a sutured scleroconeal tear or a scleral tear, where you can't put the sclerotomy in inferotemporal quadrant, and you may have to place it in nasal or some variations like that. But uh, usually this, this you is switch what we follow. Depending on the case. So let's go inside the, the eye now. And uh, we start the yeah, as I said, this is the right eye. I, I do inverted vitrectomy. So uh, as you see here, you have the infusion line infrotemporal, and then you're gonna see the infusion line it's uh, around here, infrotemporal. But this, as I said, is the, the right eye. So with the cutter, it was easy to, to get, to reach the macular area. If uh, this is the right eye, so I'm, I'm okay. See here? See here the right uh, hand with the cutter. I go, the left hand is with the elimination pipe. So it's uh, uh, right eye, temporal area, macular surface, macular pucker and the retinal membrane and whatever macular hole, hole is it easy for me to, to reach the macula. But if, if it was the left eye, le, uh, the left eye maybe, I would have to switch these positions here from 10 o'clock to 11, and these positions here, 2 o'clock to 3. So I would rotate the eye a little bit, 
I would uh, use my hands in the like twisting myself to the left, so I I would be able to do the surgery in the left eye. Did you understand this? We start. Yes, sir. Or try to be of the central vitreous. This is very interesting because we have very good uh, visualization system. So I'm doing the vitrectomy, and cutting the vitreous in the center. This is called core vitrectomy. You see there the macular hole, the macular pucker. And uh, uh, this uh, material, this cutter, goes up to 5,000 cuts per minute. It's 23 gauge. So it's very safe. So I'm not very worried about uh, if I'm going to uh, pull the retina towards the cutter because uh, it's very safe. It's, uh, this uh, stuff was from the uh, constellation. And uh, as you see here, it's easy to see the, uh, the hyaloid without uh, staining it. We could start staining, but uh, nothing would stain well, because what we have here is uh, this uh, large epiretinal tissue over there, the epiretinal membrane. So how would I stain, stain this? because uh, uh, wouldn't uh, go to the retina, into the internal limiting membrane, w wouldn't stain much. So uh, I don't like, very, uh, this is a discussion for a special, specific case of uh, uh, epiretinal membranes and macular hole and the which dye you use, the brilliant blue, uh, ICG. This is a discussion, uh, discussion from another day. What I want to point out to you now is that we are able to perform the vitrectomy without any staining, and uh, we see the whole thing very accurate with a very good lens. And now I'm very close to, to the macula. I switched, as you said, uh, as you saw, I, I, I just uh, switched the lens to a macular lens. But this is not a common macular lens. This is a, a wide angle macular lens. So that, that gives me. Uh, a very uh, uh, a better uh, view from uh, and a closer view from the retina, so I see everything into detail. Is it talking about structure, I already got rid of the vitreous now, and now I'm uh, holding on the epiretinal tissue. I have to be very careful not to pull it forcefully, otherwise I could tear the retina. Uh, just uh, beneath it, underneath uh, this tissue. So I have to be very patient and very uh, slow. You may notice in the attached tomography, OCT, a great vitreal retinal traction. As you, he, you, you see here in the OCT, uh, we have to be extremely extreme careful doing vitrectomy because we already removed the uh, core vitrectomy. I'm not talking about uh, very peripheral vitrectomy. If you go too peripheral, you might touch the lens. This is not a very good thing. And uh, you might also uh, get a, a tear in the very retinal periphery. So it's not the point by now. After you do the whole thing, and then you can go towards the retinal periphery and uh, uh, finish your work. So I'm talking about uh, the vitrectomy, the center of vitrectomy, and uh, observing the tissues, observing whatever you have in the uh, retinal, retina inside. And you see here the OCT, you see the, uh, a very large traction here and the pulling the retina uh, that way. And I'm holding on the tissue and lifting it up, I did not use any, any, any staining so far. I don't need to use because I have such a very good macular lens that I can see the vitreous. And then you have to go back and forth and get a very good zooming from the, the tissue so that you, you observe it. So uh, many people rely on uh, the uh, stainings. This is good, but uh, it's not... Uh, usually uh, required for all surgeries. That's what I want to tell you.
this is interesting now. What I want to tell you, you have this uh, retinal tissue, a retinal membrane, and I'm going forward and backwards in the, towards the, the uh, uh, mid periphery, but I cannot uh, pull it forcefully, otherwise I would create attraction at the very retinal periphery. I, I gotta be very extra careful on that. So I'm... Uh, we must now separate the retinal membrane from the adherences to the hyaloid and the retinal. I'm separating the uh, adherences from the hyaloid and the epiretinal uh, tissue in the retina itself. And uh, I can walk with the cutter, because this is very, very good cutter with uh, 5,000 cuts per minute. I can walk uh, parallel to the retina without touching it, but very slowly. Otherwise, if I use too much suction, I would probably get a, the retina. But because this is the cut is too fast, I'm doing the core vitrectomy, I'm closer to the retina. The closer you are to the retina, you the, uh, the fastest should be your uh, cutting speed. Any, any comments on that? Uh, Jadip, do, do you want to comment on that and what we said so far? Uh, no, sir, it uh, is, looks good. Uh, I generally am using 25 gauge. That's, I feel even that's even better. Uh, more uh, safer or rather you feel more comfortable. The port is closer to the tip of the cutter more closer in 25 gauge so you can go really close to the retina as you said and lift the tissues and uh, the hyaloid yeah yeah 25 it's it, it, it is really great you can be even closer to the retina and uh it has more elasticity it's good for these cases 25 even 27 yes, very cool and uh our friend from uh, Japan, Dr. Oshima, he loves doing the 27 for almost everything. And uh, yeah. he's going to be on the next retina assignment as well. And uh, 25 is cool, yeah. The thing is that you have, have to get rid of these uh, tissues uh, before, you know, now the retina is free for you to stain. And now the stain is going to work. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. It would uh, probably fall on the uh, tent of the apparatus tissue over there and uh, wouldn't help much. Now I'm performing this uh, air fluid exchange. That is a step of the uh, vitrectomy. And so uh, I like to perform a total air fluid exchange because doing the total air fluid exchange, the uh, brilliant blue that I like to use uh, most, you know, it uh, stains the retina very well. It becomes very well stained, making it easier for you to, to know where the uh, internal limit, limiting membrane is. Sometimes you get some small, tiny little folds from the uh, internal limiting membrane, make it easier for you to remove it. So uh, I do, that's why I do a complete air fluid exchange. Some people say do partial air fluid exchange. I, I prefer not to do partial. I have a very much better visualization uh, from the yeah, uh, total air fluid exchange. In the beginning, I was not doing as you see, exchange. it's now possible to remove the ILM. And the thing is, the ILM, they are not always the same, especially in this case, especially for vitrectomy starters, especially when you are starting your first epiretinal membrane peel or first macular hole case. Sometimes you have a traction that is long standing over there. In this case, you had this uh, macular pucker over there, everything uh, pulling on the retina for such a long time. And when you see, sometimes the ILM just uh, escapes. Uh, you, you, you grab it and uh, you rotate uh, in the spinning movement very fast and easy. In this case, as you see, 
when you pull the retina or the ILM over there, the internal limiting membrane, you see the whitish uh, retina below. So what happens? You have this uh, uh, traction, and very adherent epiretinal uh, internal limiting membrane tissue on the, the retina, so you have to be slow. This is time for you to be slow. You cannot go fast. It doesn't matter how good you are. You have to be fast and patient and uh, things are going to be just uh, good. Th this is the main time of the surgery. It's important for you to do the uh, macular peel and uh, also see the, the, what is around. Otherwise, you might get lost. So that's why I prefer this macular lens. And this macular lens is uh, the uh, wide angle type. So I don't, be, uh, I don't become concentrated on the, only on the center. And so, as I was saying, you, you grab and you re-grab and you keep going around uh, this area and then you have the, the, uh, the area re uh, released of this uh, epiretinal tissue. This way, we relieve the tractions. You see this noise? It's, uh, it's not real. I just uh, made it up. This should be more emotional, you know, the uh, surgery. You know? There's a special sound effect. It looks like he's staring something there, but... Uh, After this step, we continue with the vitrectomy to remove residual vitreous from the middle and extreme periphery. And then I did the work, the main work of the surgery, and I did vitrectomy the core and some uh, mid-peripheral vitrectomy. Now I will take a look in the all areas, 360 degrees, and do vitrectomy temporal, nasal, superior, inferior, and uh, remove the vitreous that is left. Uh, because we are planning to put gas inside the, uh, the eye, so we need more space. So the more you remove the vitreous, the better. But uh, in those cases and cases like that, you don't need to go too peripheral, otherwise you could either uh, hit the lens with the, uh, the cutter or the light pipe, or you could uh, create a hole without uh, that being necessary. Again, we perform a network exchange and end the laser for red Sir, uh, just one thing, uh, one uh, important step here in this beginning of the surgery is PVD induction. Is what? PVD induction. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I started the vitrectomy, as you see. We we're going to go back to 340 here. Oh. I started the vitrectomy here, and this I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, removing with the force as I'm applying here suction and the cutter speed. I'm not right. cutting much. I'm, I'm uh, applying this suction so that I, I lift the... Uh, uh, the PV, I'm creating the PVD, so I might choose to go uh, around the optic nerve or where okay. I see I could get the PVD. In this do case, you use I the IVDA? see. Hmm? What is that? Uh, do you use tricord to stain the vitreous? Or... No, no, I don't use. I was, I was telling you that uh, you might use. Yeah, might, uh, that's not a problem. And uh, but I don't use at all because I see the vitreous. With this lens, it's very easy to see the whole thing. If I zoom it in or zoom it out, I see the vitreous, the periphery. So it's easy to get, as you see here. You can notice the hyaloid reflects off. You see, uh, I'm getting the hyaloid with the, uh, as you see now, I see, I just got the hyaloid with the appropriate suction. The hyaloid is already on the tip. You might get it 
in the uh, uh, nasal or uh, uh, this place, it was easier for me. I got a hyaloid over there. So I lift it off and lift it up. And uh, so I'm starting my, uh, my, uh, my, my uh, PVD induction. And uh, it's possible to use at the, on the tip a silicone tubing, very short one. And uh, if you get hyaloid, it goes uh, bending. It's called the, the, uh, the fish strike. sign. Fish strike, so. Yes, yeah, that's it, yeah. And then uh, it bends and uh, you know uh, you are in the vitreous area. Now here, uh, moving forward, where we, we were at, and uh, I'm doing some laser. You see? The retina is uh, kind of whitish, so the laser wouldn't take much, but I came uh, to this place with the cutter because I switch hands because the patient has a lens, a natural lens, so I might uh, switch my hands, and uh, oftentimes, I'm with the right hand doing vitrectomy, and then I switch, I'm using the uh, uh, illumination pipe, and then I keep switching. And then you, I, I did this uh, small barrier laser, just a line or two, because uh, we go uh, back and forth, we enter and we leave the eye, and uh, this could cause attraction. I don't see any hole over there, but I like doing these lines uh, around the retina so that I'm sure I'm not causing, uh, if I caused any traction or any iatrogenic hole, these uh, will protect in the post-operative period while the uh, gas is there and then the healing process. And uh, if I had this uh, hole, I would uh, do that. I don't do much laser, just uh, where I come with uh, cutter, with the light pipe and the uh, infusion line. Just, uh, it's good for me because when I want to see whether the patient is mine or not, I just look uh, very peripheral, supratemporal, infratemporal, uh, and uh, supranasal, I see uh, this laser is mine. <laughs> I know the so patient is mine. you do 360 degree laser or just at the sclerotomy sites? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, just at the sclerotomy sites. And uh, when I see the post-operative patient, the period, I know the patient is mine because I usually do that. So you connect it to the aura, sir? What is that? The laser burns, you will connect to the aura, is it? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the uh, connected to what? The aura serrata. I, I didn't get this. Uh, do you connect the laser like uh, from aura to aura? Like oh, you connect it to the aura serrata? Yeah, I, I connect the laser. I, I have the... Uh, wh what I connect is it's that uh, what you asked. I have the, the, the laser filter. I have another... Uh, the, the laser pipe. So uh, the laser is connected beforehand. So because no, I so know in advance... I'm going to do the laser, so I connect the laser before I know I have to do the thing. The good thing, I, I always tell the fellows and the uh, residents, especially the fellows, that you have to think in advance, uh, J.D.P., you have to think before right. the next step. Otherwise, the surgery will be stopping everywhere. So uh, before doing the laser, I already decided I was going to do, and so I tell the nurse, please mount the laser over there, and uh, now it's the laser time. I have the, the, the equipment on my hand, and I've started it is very fast. Next time, next step will be air fluid exchange. I, I just uh, press uh, uh, left down the, 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 the pedal, and then I have the air fluid exchange. And uh, you keep the things going, you understand? And uh, yes. otherwise, it would take too much time to to do the thing. So the laser was the, uh, already prepared in advance, and now I'm just uh, using it to, for that purpose. And you see, we removed the tissue. This patient is a lot better now because he's got no more traction. He was with, uh, as you remember, a, I'm going to show the two uh, OCTs in movement. He was with uh, this large defect he still have, have some macroedema, but by that time, the patient was uh, 10%. We, we didn't see, uh, not even in the angel, the edema just uh, uh, disappeared. There were no, no more edema. So that the traction is much less as well as the macular edema. The 
footage from the comparative. As you see here, what a difference. We don't have the attraction anymore. We did not cause any epi retinal defect, JD, uh, because uh, we, mm -hmm. we pulled yes. this whole area very gentle. So we just separate it. Can, can, you, can you see here, if I pull it very forcefully, I could There'll have... There'll be a hydrogenic hole there. Yeah. yeah, I could have created a macular hole over here. Correct. So that's why I was telling uh, the residents and the fellows, I usually tell them, I put the cutter, the cutter flush to the retina here, and uh, I pull just a little bit, and then I go walking horizontally here to remove only the epiretinal tissue. Because this area is already elevated, as you'll see here. If I go and pull in everything very fast, and then a hole will be created at the same time. Right. Understand? And yes. now you see the difference before and after. And uh, the patient was uh, almost a 10% gas, but uh, this uh, edema, and uh, we did the uh, angel. I'm gonna show the angel in uh, uh, seconds. The edema disappeared completely. So I start the, uh, the OCT again. As you see here, early phases, we don't see the edema anymore. And uh, we have the, the uh, gas bulb over there, up, it's 10% uh, or less. 10%. And uh, you see the... Uh, gas uh, in the of edema. Two minutes already. So you don't see maybe some small edema, but uh, it's a lot better than uh, it was before what i wanted to say to point out to you is that uh, the vitrectomy uh, applies to specific cases but some uh, teaching and some details apply to all vitrectomies so i have this uh, this case while i was doing this and uh, you have uh, a very interesting image from here in the oct on the left you have the whole thing uh, just uh, pull it away from the retina. And uh, in the OCT, uh, postoperative OCT, you don't see this, this defect anymore. Understand? It's very interesting to, to remove only this area. But if I go forcefully here, I would have created a hole. And then the, the outcome would be uh, worse. So you, uh, as I said, it's not easy to do that way. But I'm very familiar doing that way without even staining. Because I didn't need to stain. Did I need to stain? I have very, very good view from the retina, very good lens, very good wide angle uh, vitrectomy lens and the macular lens. So I see the vitreous, even though the vitreous uh, translucent. But then it, by pulling the tissue, by doing the DVP, as you, you said, uh, promoting the uh, PVD, then the vitreous appears. And then at the retinal periphery, you zoom it out, so you, you come a little uh, farther from the retina, you see the retinal periphery, the uh, uh, peripheral vitreous, and uh, you get rid of it with uh, the, uh, the surgery, with, with the vitrectomy. So uh, it's not difficult at all. You just have to, uh, to see it. And uh, the good thing, the vitrectomy, to be good, you, you gotta see. You gotta see what we're doing because you, if you don't see, you don't go. You whatever you see, you do. If you don't see, I don't think you should even try to do. Understand? And, so, which uh, lens do you use for the macular surgeries? What I viewing use, system do you? Most of my lenses are from Vogue. From Vogue, I have okay. the. Uh, uh, the vitrectomy, the regular lens from Vogue, it's called, it's called the SSV, that gives you a very good view from uh, that tiny, that small lens, a very good view from the, the retinal uh, 
uh, in a hole in the retinal periphery as well. But I like, uh, you know, why I do my scleroderma is a little further. I don't, I, I don't go too far. Otherwise, I would uh, uh, touch the retinal periphery. I go uh, 3.8, not 3.5. 3.8. Uh, just before five, before four millimeters from the limbus, because I like using the quadraspheric lens, for example, for the uh, peripheral vitrectomy, because the quadraspheric, if you uh, you see the whole thing, like doing the laser, the image is more magnified. You see the image larger, and you don't touch the lens. But if you put your scleroderma sight very close to the uh, limbus, then you would move uh, move your hands and then you would touch the lens. But uh, if you put these uh, scleroderma sights 3.8, 3.5, 6 or 3.8 millimeters from the limbus, you don't touch the yeah, the uh, Volk lens as well uh, at all. You don't touch it. And so I like using this because I'm very familiar. Even the small lens, I control myself. I use this large lens, so I hold the lens, so I don't have an assistant. The, the assistant is on my side, just uh, to put uh, methyl cellulose and uh, wet the cornea, and uh, if he's a fellow, he's gonna switch the positions with me, and he's gonna do the surgery as well. But uh, I don't have uh, somebody to hold the lens because I hold the lens myself. This large lens, uh, is easier to hold, but even the small lens, the SSV for the vitrectomy, you hold it uh, very well. You can hold it uh, without uh, having it escape. And I don't use a ring. And uh, this SSV lens I, I, I already comes with some uh, foot plates, so it, it goes uh, over the cornea. Uh, anybody of you use uh, this uh, lens, the SSV with the foot plate? I like using this because it stays on the cornea and uh, even if it moves uh, here and there and uh, I, I do the surgery like holding. I, I, with my left hand, I, I have the light pipe. With the right hand, I have the cutter. And uh, with other fingers in positions, I, I have the lens in place. I have uh, uh, a video in YouTube showing inverted vitrectomy, how we do that. But I'm not teaching and then asking you to do inverted vitrectomy, but uh, how I do that, I would say I better explain. Because I, uh, the movements to uh, where you want to cut, for example, you have, if you have uh, uh, a fake patient, and uh, if you want to go too far periphery, you got to move the eye so the cutter will go past very below and far from the lens, so you wouldn't touch the lens at all. And uh, this lens, SSV, gives you so much peripheral uh, visualization that if you have a fake patient, if you want to go too peripheral, you touch the lens. So you, even with the best peripheral lens, you cannot use it in a fake patient, otherwise you would cause the cataract. So you go, you have to know the limits from the lens, you have to do the appropriate movements in the eye, so you get the appropriate structures you are looking at. Ash Aishwara, what did you think about it? What, was the surgery interesting? Yes, uh, the video was very good, very interesting. Uh, I actually got to know a lot of points. Uh, one doubt I had, sir, that uh, in all the surgeries, when wherever you're operating the traction, you're also showing us the picture of the OCT, uh, wherein it's showing that there is traction. So does this mean that uh, in every case, before you do the surgery, you must compulsorily take an OCT so that you have a better idea of what to do when you go inside? Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes I even cancel the surgery if I don't have an OCT, especially for macular holes or epiretinal membranes, and especially because I like operating on, on uh, epiretinal membranes very early. If the membrane, if the patient is at 20, 40, getting worse, 20, 50, I decide to operate. So I go ahead and ask for uh, OCT because I need to compare the pre and the post-operative period 
So I, I, I need the image, not only for that, but also for medical legal, legal questions. And sometimes you have uh, these uh, large macular holes, even though they close, they don't get a good vision out of the patient's eyes. And uh, why, why do you, uh, my vision is not so good? But you see here, the hole before the hole, now it's closed, but sometimes uh, you don't have, uh, that's why sometimes I ask for micro perimetry as well, and uh, the PEM was a potential of the visual acuity, macular, and uh, it's good that you have, but for macular surgery, I usually convince my patients that it is very necessary, even though many patients are private and many patients are from the government that they cannot pay, but uh, they talk to the family and yeah, uh, they... I think OCT would be a little bit expensive for all patients. I mean, I know about uh, Brazil, but in India, I don't know if everyone will be able to afford. So how do we... Yeah, I, I uh, think it's... Not it's enough. Is it not it's enough to use that clinical, uh, you know, observation? Like when we examine the patient with a 20D or a 90D indirect ophthalmoscopy, we will be able to know what the traction looks like. So is that not enough before we go in for the surgery? Yeah, could be enough, but uh, I prefer to have the image. But if I don't have the image, I will do the surgery. But most of the cases I do uh, with the OCT because we have this uh, government system here it pays the OCT for some patients, maybe the same as India, but for angel, for angiography, for other exams or other uh, propedeutics, they, they, the government pays, but uh, not for uh, all OCTs, and sometimes the patient has to, to wait too long, and some of these patients that need the surgery right away, like this one here, he could not uh, wait too long, so we have the uh, uh, some patients we separate for teaching purposes like this one, and so he had the OCT for free. We call okay. it uh, the study case, a study case. And uh, if uh, the patient cannot wait too long, otherwise distraction would be a lot worse within a uh, few time. Wouldn't be good for him. Yes, sir, uh, in a patient with very severe traction, during induction of PVD, will the traction worsen? Is that, is that, has that ever happened? Could happen, but I'm telling you how to avoid it happening. So the first thing, you don't go straight to the macular area where you see the, the, this whole thing tractomy. You cannot go straight yeah. there. So I started with the corvitrectomy. By doing the corvitrectomy, I removed the uh, traction from the vitreous to the apparatus tissue. This was the first thing. So the extraction was already uh, better. And then I went straight to the epi retina, not in that, that side. I came from uh, the sides, as you see here. See, I, I'm not on there, on the macular area. So I, I come here. And then when I got the membrane, you see the membrane there in the, uh, the screen up, upright? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Here, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a line, oblique line. You see? It's like oblique line here, super uh, nasal. See here? This is oblique line? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got, it's not here, but it, it's attached here and there. And so when I got this, see? So I already detached it from periphery. Oh, okay. So okay. Then uh, this movement, this movement has to be very slow because I, it's like... Uh, uh, you you removing something from above the retina. So I'm just going very slow, horizontally, and then I just uh, pull it away. You see it? Okay. So if you go too fast, and then you create right away this, uh, this hole there. But I'm very slow. See, I'm very slow going here and there, watching and then I, I could grab and regrab, but this is already lifting up. See? Already detached from the aporetinal uh, the aporetinal tissue from the uh, actual retina. See? Yeah. yeah. So uh, and then, what I was telling, uh, especially the fellows here. Jessica, are you listening? Jessica? Je Jessica is having a breakfast probably now. 
And uh, as you see here, uh, you go uh, with the cutter. See the cutter? I go walking horizontal. I go walking horizontal here. So I'm uh, flush to the retina, but not uh, very close to it. I'm just uh, grabbing the upper retinal tissue. I go straight. And now, since I relieved uh, the tractions, I'm, I'm now, now going just to open it up. See, you don't have any more traction. Yes, sir. And if you go to the end of the case, you did not get any damage to the retina. And if you compare the two images there, so that this is marvelous to have. If you have an OCT, even though the case is very good, very interesting, and the patient cannot wait too long, you can do it as a teaching basis. So do you free. use uh, OCT as a guide uh, to decide from where do you want to start the PVT induction? So like in this case, we see there's a very good plane nasally. So do you yeah. use your OCT yeah. as a guide? Yes. I think like that is here. one of the reasons why I would all want to do an OCT. Yeah, I look it as uh, I use it as a guide for macular holes as well. As you see here, this uh, apparatus tissue is lifted up. So it could be easy to get it from here, but it, I decided not to get it from here because it's too close to the fovea, but I use the UCT as well for that purpose. And uh, when I have the macular hole and the uh, epiretinal membrane, I see whether the epiretinal membrane is more uh, in the center or more off to the side. So if it's more, uh, more off to the side, uh, the temporal side, for example, I go straight to the temporal side far from the fovea, then I grab it from there. If it's a nasal, I don't like to get it very nasal here because uh, you have the uh, papillomacular bundle topography below, so I, I try not to. Have the membrane uh, above and below, it's even better. You don't need, don't need to get it uh, straight there. In this case, I was uh, going around the area, then I lift it up, uh, lift it up around here around nasal, remember the video at the beginning? And then I did the whole thing. So it's interesting when you, you have a, an OCT that helps a lot. And uh, as uh, JD asked me about uh, doing the, uh, uh, or, or, or it was you, I don't know, asked about the triacinolone. I don't use triacinolone as well, but it's a good thing to use, but I don't like using because I do the vitrectomy with the appropriate lenses I see the whole vitreous. So, because also it's a basic vitrectomy, I wouldn't use because... Yes, uh, I uh, think uh, the woke lenses, which you're saying, they have excellent visualization. So, you can possibly see the vitreous at all levels, but in the uh, biome or if you're using the ones which are using now the recite, uh, you do see the vitreous if it's a uh, little opacified or uh, translucent, but sometimes if it's really transparent, uh, it's a good idea in the beginners, for beginners, they can stay in the vitreous because you have to make sure that uh, the PVD is induced before, like a, for a macular hole case, sometimes you feel that you have induced a PVD when you don't stain and you try to then uh, use a brilliant blue and it does, just doesn't stain the ILM because there is still a posterior hyaluronic remaining. So that's why it, for beginners, I would suggest that you can use a triamcinolone just a little bit over the ONH and then make sure that you have induced the PVD. Yeah, good, good so idea. But, uh, for okay. for our our residents and fellows, we don't. For beginners, uh, it's, we, it's we, yeah. For beginners, we, we don't teach that straight. That's the point. Yeah, because uh, it we, would be a little teach difficult them to visualize. Straight. Straight. Is that? It will be a little difficult to visualize, no, sir, when there is so much traction. And we will not be able to differentiate where the vitreous is and where the traction bands are. So I think, like, that's what I've, whatever I've observed, I've always found that that is the problem for me when I see. I've never performed a surgery because I've just started out, but I've only observed. And each time I observe, I always wonder, how does the surgeon know where the vitreous part ends and where the traction begins? Yeah, but my, 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 my advice to you on that, I wouldn't use at all at the beginning. Why? Because when I start doing the, uh, the vitrectomy and I do the core vitrectomy, and if I have a good lens and I see the vitreous 
and uh, the lens is clear, so I don't I don't need to to use anything. And then you see the traction over there, and uh, uh, with the macular lens you approach, you have a very zoomed zoomed view from the retina. So as you saw, it's easy to separate when the the resident or fellow is starting to do the vitrectomy. That's uh, where I don't I have him not to use the uh, uh, transitional loan at the beginning at the beginning because he has to know to understand the vitreous. So he would go straight in the middle doing the core vitrectomy, uh, uh, trying to learn the movements, the zoom in, in zooming out, and to recognize the vitreous. Because if uh, you start at the beginning with dyeing the uh, the vitreous with a transition alone, then you don't have interest to look after the vitreous. So everything is already there. So you do the thing uh, mechanically. So for, for beginners, uh, I do the other way around. I, I, I don't uh, let them use the transition alone. But then if the case uh, is more demanding, like this one, for me it was not, but for uh, the uh, first year fellow would probably be. So then I will have him use the uh, triancinolone. But as I, as I said, suppose you don't have triancinolone at all, and uh, it's finished in the market, and you cannot even uh, buy it. Or the government said, uh, you don't have to use that anymore, you cannot use it for any reason in the hospital, in the other hospital doesn't have you to lend it. And uh, then you have to go ahead and uh, do without it. And if you learn to do without it at the beginning, it's going to be a lot easier for you. And uh, that's what I'm telling you. The fellow, when he starts the vitrectomy, he has to know very well the vitreous and do vitrectomy. And he knows whatever is there below the vitreous is not vitreous anymore. It's apparatal tissue. It's apparatal membrane. It's whatever else. So he cannot make the confusion uh, between uh, what is not vitreous, especially in diabetic retinopathy patients with vitreous hemorrhage, you start doing the vitrectomy, you see the whole thing red, you don't see much, yeah, and then you start doing cool. vitrectomy, and uh, you might get the retina because the retina has traction and is above, up above, and then you cut on the retina. You understand what I mean? So yes, it's sir. important to learn to start without using it, and uh, when you are used, to the vitrectomy in that one or the other case, you start using the transitional loan, and then I agree. And uh, after you got rid of the vitreous, and then you would use another dye as a brilliant blue. We like to use the brilliant blue, and uh, the case is going to be just okay. But uh, as you saw, this case is a macular case. Macular cases are usually very, you know, you got to be very careful. So be slow. No rush. Uh, you don't need to rush. You don't need to to go uh, fast. Let's sir, I will uh, also, uh, sir. But you just described how you uh, hold the lens yourself, like you have a cutter in one hand, pipe and light pipe in another. But you're still mm -hmm. able to uh, stabilize the lens without needing an assistance. Because I have used, uh, I have done uh, vitrectomies using these woke lenses for quite some time. But I always had an assistant who would hold the lens for me. So if you could uh, sir, uh, post a video or demonstrate first to how you manage to... Uh, yeah, this is a lot of training, Asta. Uh, stabilize and, uh, her suturing and, uh, you know... Uh, uh, okay. Yes, I said I have a video on YouTube showing that... I mean, a video from how... outside, uh, which shows how you are uh, handling the lens, uh, an outside video, as to how you have positioned your hands so as to you are able to... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, this video I'm showing my, my hands, how, how they stay. Yes, sir. And uh, I already learned that from my brain, you know. When I go this way, I see the thing the other way around because I, I operated inverted. Also, That's my movement. That's amazing, sir. Operating inverted is, I think, uh, the most difficult thing to learn uh, doing an inverted vitrectomy. I know just uh, one or few people who are doing that. Like, we are all used to doing a, a vitrectomy while using an uh, inverting system. You do it without that. That's really amazing. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. And uh, uh, take a look into my, my video in YouTube. It's uh, called, uh, I think, it's how I do inverted vitrectomy. 
and then you're gonna see my hands out of the uh, eye, you know, you see how they move and how I go back and forth. I, I'm used to that, you know. Uh, even the small lenses I put on the cornea and uh, I, I can get away with that without uh, assistant holding. Sometimes I have the assistant, no, you don't touch because you're gonna shake and uh, my <laughs> instead of helping me, <laughs> it's not gonna be okay. But then when I switch it over to the uh, uh, fellow like Jessica, Jessica, you're there. Did you finish your breakfast? I don't know if Jessica is there, I think. Uh, but uh, she, she was there, but, but because the iBank Foundation, the people already started seeing patients there, I guess. But uh, uh, then I switched to, to Jessica, for example, and uh, she uh, does the vitrectomy, and I, I, we go back and forth. And uh, when we see the uh, fellow is uh, uh, more confident, and then uh, uh, he does uh, the whole case, that's why I learned, that's why, uh, the way I learned in, in Toronto, Canada, with uh, Dr. Devaney, Dr. Lam, and uh, people from Red Nelson, and uh, they, uh, we had this uh, small booklet we wrote. Uh, Dr. Nakamura did 30% uh, of the surgery, 50%, 70%, 100%. The, my first 100%, I was so happy. <laughs> because uh, we are already done by the end of the fellowship there, uh, 300 cases. So it's good. And uh, I guess in uh, uh, your service, you have uh, many patients like we have here in the IBEG Foundation because we see lots of people, lots of people referred all over the country. And uh, so we, we have uh, many, many, many referrals from here. So that's what was about it. And uh, I'm stop sharing here. I'm so happy that I can share with you these uh, uh, things that I do. I'm not saying this, I'm sharing this knowledge. I'm sharing this, some experience from things I do, from things I did, from things we, we learned and decided not to do anymore and uh, from experience. And uh, last but not least is uh, don't go too, too further, don't go too much. And uh, if you think the case is over, it's good, and you already removed the membrane, for example, and uh, finish by there and uh, stop it there. And uh, don't go too peripheral, otherwise you're gonna get a break in the retina. So be extra careful with everything and uh, do it in special times of surgery. Do it slow pace. There is no point to, to rush. There is no, not the nurse uh, like uh, I did my <laughs> fellowship in, in Canada. And I was there with Dr. Devene and the nurse. Uh, Dr. Devene, you have just uh, 10 minutes. You have to rush the other, to rush the other case. Understand? And then we get crazy with that. But uh, if you can wait, you, uh, uh, do I agree, Dr. Natarajan? If you, you, if you spend some time, some more time doing the macular hole, the pin in there, spend time, no rush. See first, do after. Do not do the action without seeing the best, with the best lens. If it gets unfocused, you get, get it focused again, and then you grab the membrane, don't rush. That's my advice, that's what I do. Uh, so far. Natarajan, it's very, it's so interesting. It's so good to talk to you and uh, people and uh, share these things. Yes. And uh, uh, I'm very happy uh, that we're going to start the program because the program is good for everybody. And uh, we, we may share uh, mostly our experience. On, yeah. on so, that, uh, so my my suggestion, I told I think uh, probably Jaydeep, me, now Asta, and Amit can uh, finalize with Aishwarya. So I thought my idea was to teach a new fellow like Aishwarya, who's still not exposed to vitreoretinal surgery. She's going to come to the hospital only next week, and then uh, yeah. she can be equipped. She like anybody in the world can be equipped with the what is vitreoretinal surgery theory, and simultaneously the residents, PGs postgraduates and uh, beginners of uh, ophthalmology can also listen to this whenever they want 
and then get interested. For example, somebody wants to say, okay, I'm going to be a comprehensive ophthalmologist in a remote part of uh, uh, the country, whether it's India or uh, Brazil or Argentina. And then I, I want to know when to refer a surgery patient or a medical retina. They should get a concept from this, from the, uh, what do you call, from the internet or from the YouTube. So that's the idea. So I think we'll make a schedule and we all will agree and then we'll post it in the uh, group. Yeah, so it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So next week, I think yeah. uh, uh, Aishwarya is making, in the next two days, we'll make, she'll make a mail. And me, Jaydeep and Asta will go through it and we'll take your approval, Hudson, so that uh, we are all in the same page. Sure, sure. And I might include some uh, things that we do here so we mixed uh, the, uh, the the things. It's going to be good to to know what you do more there and uh, what we do here. Yes, and, uh, yes. It's good to to share these uh, different approaches as well. Yes. Jadi and Asta. And uh, Jessica wants to say something. Yes, sir. Jessica. Oh, Jessica, how are you? Did you get back? <laughs> Jessica, you're around? Jessica, Jessica is a little shy today. She doesn't want to. Uh, she's uh, one of our four vitro uh, retinal surgery fellows there. And. Uh, She's very good. She did the residency in our service, and uh, she's very. She is writing Jessica, excellent. She's writing. Why do you think of excellent presentation? Okay, so Jedi, so uh, you, uh, Asta, and me can let uh, Ashwara write the mail, whatever I spoke to her, and then uh, finalize sure. it and take it okay from Hudson. At least for the next four weeks, we can decide what can be the format. And I'm, I was just again thinking while Hudson was talking. Uh, we, uh, we we can also try to make an uh, something like a ebook on a for a fellows uh, for a fellowship. Yeah, and uh, I will share with the link and uh, uh, for you uh, also uh, the file. So you publish into Vitretna Master the YouTube channel there, and uh, I saw that it's already almost a hundred people over there. You know, yes. and you created the group in a week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I should have created it for me. Yeah, very good, As Aishwara. No, uh, thank you, sir. Just uh, with sir's help. <laughs> uh, sure, no, I, I think as I told you, no, it's uh, we all want to make it win so that we can use this for every year fellowship, and then uh, the fellow we can then uh, tailor make it to the next fellow next year. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. It's a kind of a course. It's good. Yeah, so next is so thank you very much, Rajan. Thank you. I appreciate. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Ancient. Yes, sir. So where is Daniel today? Daniel is still sleeping. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, eight eight twenty nine here in know, Brazil. And, uh, uh, you know, it's very good that he sleeps. He's uh, one year and uh, eleven months. 11 months, uh, two days ago, okay. one year in 11 months, uh, he's very, uh, he's very okay. happy boy. <laughs> Asta, how old are your children? Same, one year, huh? 11 months, so they'll be two years in October. <laughs> oh, same as... Uh... Same, sir. J, J Deep, is your, your, your son is not there today? No, no, he's sleeping too, today. Today ah. I made sure he's put to sleep in the other room. Yeah. Oh, it's after it's even it's about five o'clock now so at 3 30 i send them both my daughter and son to sleep with their mom so that they don't come in here that's good yeah i say uh Natarajan, family is everything family and uh Some other meeting yeah no we are finishing in a minute i'll join you i'm here only Take your time. Yes, no problem. So, so Jaydeep, uh, let yes, I should make it, and then uh, we, we will uh, do it. Sure, sir. I'll, I'll go through it and I'll give my inputs. Right. No, not input. I think I told Aishwarya, you, me, Amit, and Asta will be the teacher. Me and uh, Hudson will be the main mentors. 
and uh, right. you three will be a teacher and we are going to be panelists who can come we can decide i mean every tuesday once we start i think i believe uh, today they have announced uh, september 21st everything is going to open right all right all right no no in india uh, they are opening the trains and buses and everything from 21st september i believe okay so what i'm saying so we can take turns uh, tuesday but uh, i should have going to be in the hospital So flowers to India. Okay. Flowers to India. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. So see you on eight. Thank you. Bye. See you on eight. Thank you. I should have been talk later. You can talk to Jaydeep later. Right? Yes, sir. I'll uh, I'll coordinate with Jaydeep, sir, and Arthur, ma'am. I'll. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. 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 All right.